So last year in November, the family of our very much loved creative parenting expert Nikki Bush suffered a tragic loss when they were attacked in their home in Johannesburg and Nikki's husband Simon was shot and killed. Those were a few moments, in fact, just six minutes that changed the family's lives forever. And this morning, Nikki rejoins us here on the couch to share some of her experience of living a life after this tragic event. Nikki, my God, we've missed you. We love you so much. It is so good to have you back in our field, our energy here. Our condolences to you and the boys and your family. I know words don't even begin to, to express. I, I suppose the question ringing through my mind is, is how are you? Is there even a way that you can answer that, <laughs> that question where you are right now? Sure, Graham, it's a very loaded question. Um, it depends what moment you ask me. And it's very difficult to put any of this to words. In fact, just for the last two and a half months, I've just been saying to people, this is just the most bizarre experience and there are no words to describe what we're going through. The, the picture we had is broken and nobody can fix that picture. We can only focus on healing ourselves over time. It's, it's like stepping into a different reality uh, and I'm so glad we had an opportunity to connect again yesterday so I, I could just feel your presence. I didn't realize how much I would miss you with having the um, little jack around and how much I've relied on you as my, my parenting brain every week to, to plug into. And I think what, is, what has really inspired me is, is during this time, life goes on. Your boys have had to go through these major milestones. There's been varsity, there's been finishing of matric. Um, driver's licenses. Driver's licenses. Yeah, how... All the things that dad's supposed to be here for, you know. And, and that's tough. That's really tough, you know. And I think uh, when you take the three of us, we are going through three different versions of the same trauma. And I think that that's quite hard to handle because we were in three different places when it happened. So, you know, our view of it, our experience of it is incredibly diff difficult and different. Um, and bearing that in mind, you know, that my trauma is different to both my son's trauma. It's quite complicated. Uh, quite complicated, to <laughs> say the least. Yeah. Um, I, I am amazed at how you've chosen to become a voice for so many people that, that don't have that voice going through this very same experience. And you've been able to apply so much of the knowledge that you get to impart every day. How important is finding that routine? What has been your saving grace to, to pull through mm. those, those seconds when it gets to its very worst? So I guess we're not going through normal anymore. Our normal is different and we're trying to create a new normal. And I talk a lot to people about routine, that families need routine. And for two and a half months, we've had no routine. Um, I don't think I've cooked more than five meals in two and a half months. I go to bed at strange hours. We get up at strange hours. Um, and we, we're actually ready to get back into some kind of normal, which for us would be routine of going back to work. And I have to say, as hard as it's been to step back into the world of work, it's also quite nice to feel just a little bit normal every now and again. And uh, obviously my son has started varsity and my eldest son started a new job. So, yeah, we are finding a sense of, of normality, but certainly nowhere near a sense of peace yet. Um, and, and maybe that has to be redefined, um, you know, that we might never find our way back to that place. But um, the fact that you have all shown each other so much strength is amazing to me. For someone who's going through this, this same scenario, what do you need in a time like this? What has stood out for you? Um, I guess almost equal amounts of space to process, but lots of people to carry you because you just, you cannot do this alone. Um, there are just so many things that have to be done at speed under huge pressure. I have huge gaps in my memory um, and you need people you really trust um, around you. So to everybody who has sent through messages of love and support to all the people who sent us meals, to people who just pitched in our space, especially to, to all our family and our friends who have just really carried us. I mean, you just don't realize how kind the world is until you actually go through something like this. So despite the fact that it's been devastating, the opposite has been just the overwhelming kindness that we've experienced from everybody. So to everybody out there, thank you.
Nikki, I think the, the way that you have approached this and the fact that you have chosen, you have chosen to show so much bravery and you are being heroic and being that voice for so many people that don't have that voice in this country, so many women, so many families. That is a choice. As much as Simon was taken away from you, and that wasn't a choice, you have chosen to live true to his legacy. Um, and he chose to be a hero for you and your boys, and that is something truly remarkable and something that, that I, I will not be able to wrap my head around as a father and as a, as a partner. That is something that is absolutely amazing. We, we absolutely love you. We absolutely love you. Thank you so much for coming home. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to take a, a very quick break. We'll see you on the other side.